ways. But just as Darren needs estrogen, Natalie needs the male sex hormone, testosterone. Her adrenal glands, which sit on top of her kidneys, pump small amounts of testosterone into her blood. Her blood carries it to her brain, where it seeps into the surrounding cells, stimulating her reproductive circuit and giving her the sex drive she needs to further the interests of her genes. All right. Oh, hi. Looking good? Ta, so what's up? How'd you fancy going out with me? Going out where? Wherever you want. So? All right. Nice one. There's more to testosterone than creating a sex drive. It also gives Darren drives to help him get sex. He is more competitive and assertive than ever before. If you come for band practice, I won't be two ticks. I haven't come for band practice, sir. I want to part in the play. I didn't know you acted. I'm an engineer. Are you now? And I can sing. Darren doesn't know it, but changes inside his testicles are bringing him closer to furthering his genes. Deep within the wall of a tube, a dormant cell is coming to life. The cell divides. The new cell that is formed will become Darren's very first sperm. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet in rap. Montagues versus Capulets with music. Montagues, sopranos all, Capulets, altos and tenors. I want all the Montagues to have unbroken voices. But Romeo's a Montague. I'm a tenor. Exactly. How would you feel about playing Tybalt? I'm Romeo. Romeo. The fiery Tybalt. So wicked, so manly, so much more like you, David. So who's going to be Romeo? Meet your new arch enemy, Darren Bruff. And Natalie, let me introduce you to your new love interest. Natalie thinks she is more mature than Darren, but her body is no closer than his to being able to reproduce. In her ovary, her enlarged follicles continue to grow, but they need to swell to 100 times this size before the eggs contained within them can reach maturity. Darren and Natalie are losing control of their bodies to hormones. The levels of testosterone and estrogen in their blood are rising with every passing day, slowly transforming their bodies to prepare them for sex. One of the main objectives of sex hormones is to trigger changes which will make them more attractive to potential mates. But sometimes the effect is just the opposite. Last night, Darren had a testosterone surge with unfortunate consequences. Deep in his pores are tiny glands called sebaceous glands. Sebum should flow out of the gland and up onto the skin. But Darren is producing so much that it clogs his pores. It becomes a breeding ground for bacteria. The pore is infected. Sebum gave our ape ancestors glossy coats 
making them attractive to other apes. All that gives Darren is pimples. <laughs> yeah, you know, she's all right. Natalie is luckier. She too produces sebum, but estrogen keeps the levels down, reducing the effects on her skin for now. Yeah, you mean you can't even eat. What's wrong with his face? He's wearing makeup. <laughs> or a pizza face! <laughs> Natalie thinks you're wearing makeup. <laughs> Darren's body is overreacting to escalating hormone levels. And pimples are not the only result. Oh, come on, man. Testosterone has made his genitals so sensitive that even the slightest touch can trigger a response. The caverns of his penis are filling up again. But this reaction is a reflex. His brain is not involved. Darren's penis seems to have a mind of its own. In fact, it's quite common for teenage boys to suffer as many as 20 reflex erections a day. While Darren suffers at the hand of hormones, Natalie is benefiting. Until recently, there were few visible differences between her body and a boy's. But sex hormones are now sculpting her body into a different shape, designed to be attractive to men. Under the influence of estrogen, in Natalie's chest, Fat globules are sucked out of her blood by surrounding fat cells. The cells soak up the fat, and as they expand, so do Natalie's breasts. The same things are happening to the fat cells on her hips and buttocks, giving Natalie the first signs of womanly curves. Oi! What? I'm a mate. We look out for each other. Look, I've had enough of this. I'm going to look some trainers. Shallow. I know. Shallow's in. <laughs> Testosterone's been nothing but trouble for Darren but he now has enough for his brain to convert into estrogen, finally triggering his growth spurt. His skeleton is lengthening at a rate of half an inch a month, faster than any time since he was a baby. Being taller will help make Darren more attractive to girls. But in the short term, such rapid growth has its drawbacks. Yo, 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 we in the place to be on the wheels of still capular MC. <laughs> Easy now. Hey, man, can't believe my eyes. That girl's got to be my prize. Don't go there, that's not for you. She's a capular. Never mind, take you. As Darren moves around, his brain must track exactly where every part of his body is to keep his movement coordinated. But now that his limbs have grown, his brain must adjust. No way, Uncle. This is our place. I'm making sorry if any show in his face. Maybe I'm glad I'm being it to one-to-one up there. 
And because his legs have grown so quickly, his brain just can't keep up. Darren's hormones are working to make him more and more sexually attractive. His muscles are made up of fibrous strands. Testosterone makes these fibers multiply, causing the muscle to thicken, bulking up his biceps. But the fastest multiplying cells in Darren's body are in his penis. Natalie's sex drive is kept active by testosterone. But the hormone also has a surprise in store. Inside pores in her groin and armpits, testosterone seeps out of her blood and stimulates hairs to grow. Over time, they extend up the pore to the surface of her skin. In the space of one month, Natalie has grown 60 feet of pubic and armpit hair. We have our chemistry. Now for our explosion, the first kiss. Shall we begin from Gone and Live? Gone and live, stay and die. Love you, girl, and you wonder. It may not feel like it, but Natalie's new hair is another attempt by her body to attract a mate. But believe it is the morning girl. The hairs are designed to trap sweat. In fact, a hairy armpit can hold 30 times more sweat than a hairless one. Bacteria living on her skin feast on the sweat. They excrete waste in the form of gas with a powerful odor. A text from a homegirl saying chow and three words, mother, bedroom now, come out the window before she comes. You should have gone when we saw the sun. B.O. is an outward sign of Natalie's emerging sexual maturity. Our ancestors found it attractive. Come over here and don't you diss me. Ain't going nowhere until you. But in our hygiene conscious world, B.O. tends to have the opposite effect. Ain't going nowhere until you kiss me. More passion, Darren, more passion. <laughs> All the changes in Natalie's body 
are designed to aid a process still unfolding in her ovaries.